Before doing any actual personal work, based on the internet discussions, I had the impression that switching to Scala 3 would be quite painful. In practice, it was pretty straightforward. In the retrospect, this was the case because I and my team fall into the following buckets. Don't use IntelliJ, don't use macros, and use type level step. And it wouldn't be as smooth if any of those were different. On top of that, I don't like excessive curly brackets, so I'm positively reinforced by replacing all code with slicker Scala 3 code. So let's start in my world first. Follow the primary migration steps and then talk about what to do if your setup and stack differ. Before you can jump into action, you and your team have to answer a couple of questions. If you are actively writing Scala, I'd expect that you don't choose to stay on Scala 2. Why would anyone want to miss out on all the new features and improvements? Who wouldn't want to rewrite everything to Scala 3? The reality is not so simple. Some people have monoliths, some use Spark, which you can already use with Scala 3, some have no time, and so on. There is no one way to do the migration. Decide what's possible and worthwhile to you and your company. Should you rewrite one service at a time? In what order then? Or should you leave the old services untouched and write all the new services in Scala 3? What about internal libraries? How much time and resources can you allocate? And so on. The last question is probably the hardest one to address. It's also an excellent time to discuss the benefits and trade-offs. And keep it fair. For example, if you just want a new shiny syntax, is it worth disturbing an old service that hasn't been touched in years? Well, up to you to decide. We decided to write all the new services in Scala 3, where most of the future work will happen, and keep the rest. Consequently, onboarding new dev without prior Scala 2 experience is one of my biggest challenges. When they switch from Scala 3 service to Scala 2 service, they bump into hurdles. Some of the so-called intuitive concepts don't work as expected anymore. This requires more explanation, and they seem to have to learn some things more than once. Okay, we define what migration means, but how exactly do we go about it? Even if we decide not to touch the existing services, we need to review our code base. Do we have any shared internal libraries? Would we need to use them in the new service? What external libraries do we use? And do they have a Scala 3 compatible release already? Other questions you might need to consider are how many services do you need to migrate? And what Scala versions does each service use? Thanks to the interrupt between Scala 3 and Scala 2.13, it might be more accessible or crucial to upgrade to Scala 2.13 first. And you have to keep this in mind. By this point, we knew that all our services were in 2.13. We knew how many internal libraries needed to be used from both Scala versions and what external libraries had no Scala 3 support yet. What is the status? What is missing? And what can we do to deal with it? For example, a couple of libraries got a Scala 3 release by the time we were done with the investigation. And one sourcey Xsource library was replaced with two lines of boilerplate. After all the meetings and our writings, comes the time to do the actual work. When you have concrete questions or action items, remember that Scala 3 migration guides are your friends. For example, it covers how to port compiler options and SBD projects. It's a great reference resource. We don't have to go into these details right now. Instead, let's talk about the bigger picture and a few other things to remember. First, dealing with internal libraries. There are multiple ways of sharing a library between Scala 2 and Scala 3 services. The good news is that you can use Scala 2.13 libraries from Scala 3 app and Scala 3 libraries from Scala 2.13 app. The bad news is that you cannot do this directly if you have shared transitive dependencies, which is a bummer but the good news is that it's actually pretty easy to deal with. Imagine you have an internal library, for example, authentication handling, specific database connector, peculiar API, or whatever. And it's used by your existing Scala 2 services that will also be used by the Scala 3 services. If your library on Scala 2 uses the DAX library, for example, and your Scala 3 application uses DAX libraries as well, you get two conflicting versions, DAX 2.13 and DAX 3. To solve this, you can cross-publish your library to both versions by adding one line to your build. To cross-compile and then to build against all versions listed in this cross-scala versions, prefix the action to run with a plus, for example, plus compile and get all the versions. At least that's what we did, and everything else just worked. Your mileage may vary. For more information, see the guides on class pass compatibility in the Scala docs, cross building in SBT docs, or cross builds in mil docs. Dealing with dependencies. If all the libraries you use are actively maintained and published for Scala 3, good. There is nothing for you to worry about. Otherwise, you might need to help them with migration or eliminate the dependency. Some libraries can be redundant on Scala 3, because for instance, Scala 3 has native support for type class derivation, and some libraries just have new alternatives. For example, at this stage, we've discovered Iron, a great lightweight library for type constraints, which replaced for us refined and new type libraries in one go. Similar to dependencies, some plugins stay working and some are redundant and can be dropped. 
For instance, the first one, I was happy to retire, was better monadic 4, because color 3 already gives me better 4 comprehensions. For example, we can bind the implicits that we couldn't do with just vanilla Scala 2. The second one is kind projector. Scala 3 has built-in type lambda syntax and kind projector compatible syntax. For even more information, see the kind projector migration guide. Finally, let's talk about dealing with code. Much of the Scala 2.13 code is still valid in Scala 3. If you want, you can use the migration tools. Otherwise, if it sounds too boring, you can copy paste the code over and fix whatever is read. You can review these incompatibilities in the incompatibility table. You might be wondering about all the new concepts and changes. For example, what should be done about implicit splits or enums? You don't have to rewrite everything right away. Here and there, you can keep using the implicit keyword instead of new given and using keywords. Same with enums. You can keep using ADTs in the form of sealed traits with case classes and refactor to the new enums when needed. However, it's an exceptional opportunity to think about the style, patterns, and consistency. The code tends to replicate and spread around via copy-paste. You must decide whether to pay up front or take shortcuts and do a more significant refactoring later. Scala 3 Rewrite allows you to get rid of the old workarounds as well as challenges and improve on your established Scala 2 patterns. For instance, I was happy to try error handling with union types and use new deriving mechanisms, but I'm still trying to figure out a more ergonomic usage for enums. And now, when we're done with the core, let's talk about the side quests. I might not be the last person you should ask about IDEs, but I'm still quite biased when it comes to tooling. I vividly remember a few years ago when the functional code with cats was primarily red. Also, I haven't touched any Java IDEs in years. I mainly work with unpopular functional languages, and I'm happy with syntax plus error highlighting and go to definitions. And if I don't need to restart the LSP server a few times a day, I'm pretty much in heaven. So with this in mind, to me using VS Code with Metals and Scala 3 doesn't feel different from using this with Scala 2 a couple of years ago. And it's only getting better. One of the latest IntelliJ IDEA releases brought enhanced Scala 3 support, and the team is constantly working on improvements. Metals has regular releases driven by Scala Center, Virtus Lab, and contributors from the community. So if you haven't recently tried either, now is a good time. What to do about macros and other issues. First, as discussed earlier, you should ask whether macros live in a separate unmaintainable service. Can you leave this service alone for now and rewrite them later? Or can you extract the usage of the macros into the independent service or a library? And if the macros rewrite is unavoidable and unattainable, consider asking for help. For instance, Virtus Lab offers free support with migration, which sounds like a great opportunity. So I hope this clears up and demystifies some things. I'd also encourage you to share your migration stories, even if they seem too boring. Also remember that IntelliJ Scala plugin teams asks for feedback and Scala Center regularly collects feedback as well. And to wrap it up, I want to leave you with this quote from Donald Glover. It's kind of like when people say, oh, this traffic is so bad. I'm like, you are traffic. You can't sit there and be like, oh man, this traffic was horrible. I'm sorry. I was like, you are traffic. You are in it. Without you, there will be no traffic. So if you're sitting there, be like, the world is shit. It's like you are the world. You have to take that responsibility.